Okay, this is a quick video walking you through how to construct a formal design of experiment using uh, a simple fractional factorial design to make your uh, experimental design and ex execution more efficient in research. So uh, the example that I'm going to use is just looking at a project in our research lab where um, students are trying to optimize the electropolymerization procedure for a polymer on the surface of an electrode. And there's lots of variables that could be changed and uh, some of those variables may be the rate at which the electrode voltage is scanned, uh, it could be the number of scans that you do, uh, or it could be the concentrations of different species in the solution, uh, it could be other things like temperature, uh, the nature of the degassing solution, virtually anything that you have control over as the experimentalist could potentially be a variable that influences the outcome. And in a traditional sense, uh, if you wanted to evaluate the impacts of each of those factors or variables on the outcome, uh, you would do that in a one factor or one variable at a time approach, which means you would hold all variables constant and change one at a time. Uh, and the problem with that is it is immensely inefficient uh, in that it would take many experiments to be able to elucidate the impact of each of those factors. Um, but more, it never allows you to actually uh, evaluate the impacts of multiple variables changing at the same time because you never actually change more than one variable at a time. So that's what necessitates this uh, formal design of experiment approach which allows you to change multiple variables uh, at the same time and still evaluate the statistical relevance of each of those factors on some sort of response. So we're going to pretend that we uh, narrowed down four factors that we want to evaluate. Uh, these are the main things and so this is up to the experimentalist to determine. We'll say uh, these four we think are really important we want to evaluate those. And so in order to do this we're going to create a fact fractional factorial design uh, and in order to do that for each of these factors or variables, we're going to choose two different levels, uh, a low value and a high value, uh, that we could experimentally evaluate. And the values you choose are again going to be up to the experimentalists. So we chose a set of values that we're calling low here. These are the standard values that we've been using for a while, and these high values are some values that are different, and we want to then evaluate if we change, say, the scan rate, does it change uh, some, some, some outcome of our uh, polymer that we're making? So I like to start this in Excel in a simple spreadsheet like this. So I just list out my factors uh, in any name that you want, and then I choose levels appropriate to the experiment. From here, I need to go to Minitab. So I can open Minitab and it looks something like this. This is what it looks like when you first open it. You can get this from uh, the college. In order to actually design the uh, series of experiments formally using this fractional factorial, I'm going to go up to STAT and then down to DOE, which stands for Design of Experiment. And I'm going to move over to Factorial. And then I'm going to walk through this prompt uh, using the Create Factorial Design. And so what I'm given are lots of different types of designs. There's reasons to use different designs, but this video is just going to walk you through the most basic, the default here, the two-level factorial, which is that high and low value that I mentioned before. So first thing you need to do then is choose the number of factors that you want to evaluate. And so if we go back to our spreadsheet, we'd already uh, settled on four individual factors or variables that we'd like to evaluate. So I'm going to set this to four. I can choose up to 15 factors with these types of designs. I'm going to leave it at four, select that. Okay, now I'm going to click this display available designs. And this is going to give me this table, which doesn't actually allow me to select anything. I can click, but nothing changes, but it's a reference. And so I have two axes here. I have the number of runs, which are literally the number of experiments, and then I have the number of factors. So to interpret this, we want to go to the number of factors or variables. In this case, it's four. And then in this column, I have two highlighted 
uh, cells here, one with the Roman numeral four and another that says full. What these numerals are indicating is the resolution of the experimental design. Resolution is this complicated idea, but it, in, in really simple terms, uh, a resolution of three allows us to evaluate the impacts of each of the individual factors, like the scan rate or the number of scans, those four factors that I identified before, on some outcome that we are measuring experimentally, uh, but nothing more. And by nothing more, I mean we can't evaluate the impacts of uh, what happens when two things are changing or three things are changing simultaneously. Uh, in a factor four or resolution four experiment that allows us to actually uh, evaluate the impacts of the individual factors in addition to what happens when we change two of them at the same time. Uh, and a full factorial design allows us to evaluate all of the impacts, so the individuals and any combined aspects as well. But you can see the more things that you are getting out of this, the more experiments you need to do. And so DOE, or design of experiment, is all about balancing how much information you want or need against the minimum number of experiments. How do you do this efficiently? For lots of things, we're typically good with resolution four because that actually is going to give us more information than we'd ever get if we did this one factor at a time, but it's going to do it with the minimum number of experiments. So it means is we're going to be able to evaluate the statistical robustness of each of those four factors and any changes mul with multiple factors by only running eight experiments, which is a lot less than what you would do if you were running this in a one factor at a time approach. So I don't need to click anything here, I'm just using this as a reference and I'm seeing that, okay, I, I'm going to need eight runs uh, for my four factors. So I click OK and now I click designs because that's where I actually decide which resolution I want. And just like the table showed, uh, since I have already selected four factors, I can now select either the resolution four or the full and you can see that changes the number of experiments from eight to sixteen. I'm happy with eight. Wouldn't, so the, there's some other variables here that we can change in the way that we design this experiment. It's not super important. Uh, maybe what would be valuable is the number of replicates for corner, which just means that um, if you choose two replicates, it's going to, for every run or every experiment, it's actually going to have you do that twice, which means that you'll actually double the number of runs, but it'll be a more robust design. So we're just going to keep this uh, as one for now, but just know not, replicates are really what they mean. It's how many times you're going to run each of those experiments. So I'll click OK. Nothing changes yet. Now I go to factors and I can uh, type in exactly what I want. And so I just grabbed uh, and copied and pasted from my Excel spreadsheet directly into this name. That allows me to uh, know what each of these factors are to me. And then I can choose the type of variable that it is or type of factor. It can either be a numeric value uh, where it actually holds a, a literal numeric number uh, like scan rate or it could be a text value and that might be something like on or off. Did I degas the solution or not? Yes or no? Uh, and then you would change this to text and then input your corresponding low and high value that you want to evaluate. Click OK. Now uh, we can click options. There's really nothing in here that we're going to, to need to evaluate other than the default. Uh, and click OK. And what you'll see is that we get uh, this matrix that's populated down here. The matrix has several columns. The columns uh, correspond to the order the experiment should run and the factors and their corresponding levels. So, so since we had eight experiments, then we will have eight rows here, each row corresponding to a separate set of conditions that we should run that experiment with. So the standard order is just a number one through eight of all of the experiments that were generated in this matrix and then the run order is the actual sequence that we should run these in for it to be randomized which is statistically more robust. The center point and the blocks are going to default to one because we didn't change those. They're not relevant to this type of analysis. And then we have scan rate, number of scans, PFAS concentration, OPD concentration, 
here and the relevant high and low values that, that we assigned in the, the actual design of experiment. So in order to actually do this experiment, the next thing we would need is some measured thing uh, that will, will allow us to evaluate whether or not changing those factors uh, are statistically important. And so that's going to be up to the experiment that you run. In this example, I just typed in uh, calculated K for PFOS. So that's the equilibrium constant for the binding of a molecule to this polymer that we're making. Because uh, in principle, what we're hypothesizing is that if we change these factors, it's going to change this. So whatever your experiment is, there must be some measurable value that you're hypothesizing will change as a function of the factors and the corresponding levels. So you just type that in, it can be anything there. And then when you do your measurement, you will fill out those values. So in this case, I would go to run order one, that's my first experiment. And for that first experiment, I would set it to a scan rate of 50 for 50 scans with a corresponding PFOS concentration of one millimolar and OPD at 25 millimolar. I would then do my data analysis and maybe come up with a value and I'll just put an arbitrary value here of maybe 100. Okay, I would then move to my second experiment, look at the corresponding factors and their levels, do my measurement and data analysis, and let's say I get some arbitrary values. And so I'm just gonna fill in this data uh, just to give us something to look at. So we, once we've completed all eight experiments here, now we have a completed data set where we've done each experiment and have a measured quantity or response. Now we can analyze this. So we're gonna go back up to stat and then DOE and factorial. And now we have a new option that's no longer grayed out saying analyze factorial design. Okay, so it's gonna give me this prompt and you can see in this empty box, it's asking for the response. So what is the measured thing that you're now gonna put back into this matrix uh, to conduct your statistical analysis? And of course, we can just click this, either double click it or click it and then select. That's gonna populate this response bin. Uh, and now we just need to uh, evaluate anything that's relevant to the outcome we want to compute. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff here that we're not gonna need to change. Uh, one thing that's useful is go to terms, and depending on the resolution that you choose for your experiment, you can look up uh, how many different uh, interactions between factors uh, you will be evaluating for. And so, of course, the simplest thing that you're evaluating is each individual factor. So scan rate, number of scans, etc but we can also look at the interaction between factors uh, that you could never do in a one variable or factor at a time approach. Uh, and so when I say include terms in the model up through, it's gonna default based on the resolution of my model to two in this case. And so it's gonna look at all the individual factors, but then also the combined interactions of say scan rate and number of scans when they change together or scan rate uh, and the concentration, et cetera. And I can evaluate other uh, f factors as well if I'd like, but I'll leave it as default. Here, uh, covariates we won't change, options we won't change, graphs uh, can be relevant. I like the Pareto plot and sometimes the normal plot. I'll add here uh, and then click OK, and then I will click OK one more time. And that's gonna generate or populate uh, the calculated values here. Um, and if I scroll down here to the Pareto chart, the Pareto chart looks at each of my factors and then has a bar corresponding. The length of that bar, if it exceeds this dotted red line, then it's statistically significant in its impact on the measured response at 95% confidence. And so then we would look at this and say, you know what? Looks like AB is the most influential, but it's not statistically significant, which means that its effect isn't um, more significant than uh, what you would expect simply from random error at 95% confidence. If one of these bars exceeded, then it would be sort of a, a dead giveaway that that is a most important uh, factor or factor-factor interaction, which is what we're seeing here.